I think this election, more than any that I've seen since I've been involved in politics, was a nationalized election. Everything was national. So there's plenty of blame to go around. It's just that the, the, uh, the only people who were running this time around that could be tagged with the problem was the legislature because mm -hmm. the governor's not running again. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for the entire metro region by DFL Senate District 42. With the November 2 vote in and counted, the political pendulum, both in St. Paul and Washington, has shifted considerably to the right. The Republicans have grabbed control of the State House and Senate. Bachman and Paulson have won, and Oberstar has lost. There will likely be a recount of the gubernatorial votes, and Governor Tim Pawlenty says he'll stay on the job until it's settled. We are joined tonight by three very in-touch and hands-on observers. Adina Steve Timmer and Minnetonka's Joe Bodell. Joe Bodell manages and writes for the Minnesota Progressive Project, a web-based soapbox of progressive perspective. MPP features a lively clutch of regular bloggers, commentary feeds from around the state and nation, and an easy way for anyone to have a voice in the new media. Steve Timmer also runs and writes for a community of liberal bloggers under the award-winning handle, The Cucking Stool. Our producer likens it to the internet version of a 19th century liberal salon. Steve, in his spare time, operates Drinking Liberally, a gathering spot for political junkies in the northeast part of Minneapolis. Fellas, the books are closed in the 2010 election, except for the continuing uh, Dayton Emmer saga. So we all know the results. Tell, tell us and our viewing audience what happened out in the southwest suburbs. Joe, what's your take on that? Well, I think the, the term perfect storm uh, has been used a couple of times, but I think it's really apt. Uh, a lot of things went wrong for the Democrats and a lot of things went right for the Republicans. Uh, in a lot of cases, these are races where 2006 was a real up year for Democrats and uh, 2010 being the, the next non-presidential year ended up being a really down year because of national trends. 34 incumbents lost their seats? It, really, really bad. But at the same time, those are races that were marginal in 2006 and 2008 were very, very tough holds for Democrats in the first place. Uh, certainly seats like Maria Rudes is, is going to hurt if it turns out that she loses. Uh, losing Paul Rosenthal and Edina uh, is, is not a good sign. Uh, Bottom line is that everything went the Republicans' way. Well, do we blame it on ourselves or do we blame it on somebody else? <sighs> a little bit of both, unfortunately. I think a lot of the messaging coming from the White House on health care reform, on Wall Street reform, I think it spent a lot more time attacking the White House's allies than it did standing up for those issues and standing up for the initiatives that the Obama White House really wanted to get done. As a result, Democrats were dejected. Democrats felt betrayed by the, the Obama White House. And at the same time, you had a flood of corporate money coming in as a result of the Citizens United decision, which enabled the Tea Party and the Republican Party to really get their message out in a very effective way. Steve, uh, uh, I've always appreciated your political perspective. What do you think happened? Well, I think Joe has, has, has a lot of it right. I agree with most of the things that he said. Uh, I think that uh, uh, in, in the case of uh, some of the close races, Paul Rosenthal, uh, was in a tough district and even in the best of circumstances. Uh, he was uh, certainly not assisted by some of the very negative uh, uh, publicity uh, or, or rather uh, a campaign literature that was... Uh, well, he got substantially outspent, didn't he, in the he final did. analysis? Yeah, he did, in including a piece early on by uh, a, an affiliate of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, four-color, uh, large, a flyer that went out to uh, to the district, mm -hmm. uh, and it set the tone for the race. Uh, and uh, he was uh, on the defensive, I think, the whole time. It's my perspective that uh, the Obama administration, giving them all the credit that they rightfully deserve, made a fundamental miscalculation in that they did not take on the economy as the first and foremost issue. What do you think about that? Well, I think the, the stimulus bill was a really great start. The, the stimulus, uh, which it's worth noting is now a dirty word in Washington, D.C. And, and around the country, uh, it was an amazing achievement legislatively, and it likely saved up to three million jobs in this country. And yet the Obama White House still managed to let it be branded as this bloated, oversized spending bill that was just another example of a liberal White House on the loose. It's not true, but that ground was seeded by the communications team in Washington. And 
by the time they let that go, they couldn't get it back. What do you think, Steve? Is that perspective on my part fair or not? No, I think it is, in, indeed. I, uh, when Obama came into office, health care was one of his, uh, uh, his signature issues. And he clearly wanted to work on that right out of the box. But it was also clear that the economy was really headed into the tank. Uh, and uh, that the stimulus bill, uh, even the, 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 uh, Hank Paulson and, and uh, uh, people uh, from the Bush administration recognized the need to, to do some stimulus. Uh, and uh, the, the package that got put together was probably too small uh, and too late uh, and was uh, uh, not properly promoted uh, in many ways by the, uh, by the Obama administration. Uh, and uh, I, I, I don't like the word messaging myself because it sounds like, like what you're saying is somehow divorced from policy. But uh, in the sense that, that messaging is effective uh, demonstration or explication of your policy, uh, I agree with Joe entirely. And I, and I think that's the key, that it's, it's not simply a matter of letting policies and, and legislation speak for themselves. You need to make a case for them with voters, with the people that are going to be affected by that legislation. If you don't, then you're letting your opponents say it's bad without saying why it's good. Ultimately, that fed into a lot of decisions to vote against Democratic incumbents yesterday. Do you think that the past legislative session had an impact on uh, the losses that we sustained out here? It's difficult to tell, honestly. I think this election, more than any that I've seen since I've been involved in politics, was a nationalized election. Everything was national. And in particular, I'm talking about uh, pushing votes for uh, tax increases, knowing that those votes weren't going to go any place with a plenty veto that couldn't be overridden. I mean, sure, it's good to get up on a, 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 and take a stand, but taking a stand on the last day of the legislative session mm -hmm. to that effect, I mean, that couldn't do Terrell Clark a bit of good up in the 6th District. No, I think the, the strategic uh, decisions made during the, the legislative session certainly didn't, didn't play a positive role. Uh, but it, again, it, it gets back to the, the question of whether, whether good policy and good politics are one and the same. Steve, do you have anything you want to add to that? Well, no, other, other than to say that uh, I think that the, uh, the public has, is, is to some extent justified in being unhappy with the way the legislature has handled things. Uh, they uh, have, have not been particularly good at standing up to the governor over the, over the years. Uh, they have not, uh, uh, they've been enabling uh, in the kicking of the can down the road that's happened uh, sure, over, sure over, over the last couple of sessions. Uh, and uh, th so there's plenty of blame to go around. It's just that the, the, uh, the only people who were running this time around that could be tagged with the problem was the legislature because mm -hmm. the governor's not running again. Mm -hmm. His approval ratings are way down as well. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, it, it's just, uh, you shake your head, you just can't figure out how this could happen, uh, that, that 34 incumbents, all Democrats, would lose uh, across the state of Minnesota. I mean, it's really good, some really good people. It's just, Very good uh, people. It, you know, Maria Root is a class act. I mean, right. it just breaks my heart that she didn't uh, uh, win, at least at this stage of the proceeding. So where do we go from here? Do, do, is it a matter of recruiting better candidates? Is it a matter of getting on message? Is it a matter of getting the message out? Is it a matter of raising enough money so that we can uh, hope? We, can't, we can never match what the corporations can unleash due to the Citizens United case, but I mean, do we have to start fundraising now and, and get money available for our candidates and encourage them to run and start running right now? Because everything's on, everything's on the, the ballot in 2012. We're talking about all the state, all the races that just took place yesterday are going to take place again in 2012. Right, because of the redistricting that sure. would be necessary. To, that this was the two-year term uh, in, in, in the 10 for, mm -hmm. the, uh, for, for the Senate candidates. So what do you think, right. Steve? Where, where do we go from here? Well, I, I, I think we, we have to redouble double our efforts, uh, clearly, uh, and we hope, have to hope the economy improves. Well, it probably uh, that's, will. Uh, that, that, that'll, that will bring things around to some extent just by itself. Uh, but uh, I don't have any, uh, uh, any, any quick answers. If I did, I certainly would let you know what they are. Yeah. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, I, th I think in the West Metro, certainly it's, it's a difficult question to answer because the, the metro area is incredibly diverse, uh, demographically and politically. I think that the, the DFL's communications machine in particular is going to need to take a really hard look at the way they're assisting candidates in the West Metro in particular. I think their, their communication strategy works in a base area like Minneapolis or St. Paul, 
but the message that they're pushing on behalf of candidates in the West Metro is not resonating with voters here. And as you mentioned, Maria Rood's case uh, in 42A, she got four very negative, very targeted, very specific mailers sent on behalf of, the, of Kirk Stensrud, her opponent, by the Republican Party of Minnesota. This was an independent expenditure by the, by the party. Mm -hmm. These are very specific, uh, targeted messages that they're putting out, and they resonate, especially in down year like this for the Democrats. Did the Democrats have any similar targeted messages they sent into the district? I believe there was one, but okay. I, it's, it, it comes down to money, it comes down to messaging, and it comes down to having those good candidates on the ballot. If Maria Rood ends up losing, I hope the, the recount goes forward and it ends up uh, going well for her, but I hope she'll come back and, and make another run of it because th this was tight enough that in a better year she should be able to pull a, a win. Let's turn to Senate District uh, 41. Kevin Staunton and 41A, Representative Paul Rosenthal and 41B, both got beat. Very disappointing. What do you think? What, what, could it, what went wrong? Well, that, that, that's very hard to say, Tim. Well, I expected them both to win, to be honest so did with I. you. Uh, Rosenthal, because he was an incumbent and uh, seemingly popular one, uh, won the endorsement of the Star Tribune. And Staunton, because he and Ron Earhart, uh, in effect, got two-thirds of the vote last time around against, uh, against Keith Downey. Uh, and many of us regarded Keith Downey as just a chair warmer for the last two years. Uh, Ron Earhart took more votes away from the Republican candidate than last time around than we expected, and uh, many of those votes went to, to Keith Downey this time. Uh, but it was a heartbreaking loss, very close loss, but uh, loss nevertheless. I haven't seen the numbers yet, but I suspect uh, Mark Dayton did not run particularly well in Senate District 41. Do you think that might have had a bearing on the uh, Staunton and Rosenthal races? Well, I suppose maybe a little, uh, although uh, uh, both Barack Obama and, uh, uh, and uh, John Kerry carried Senate 41. Uh, so I'm, uh, there's some ticket splitting that goes on in the, in the district, I, I think, pretty clearly. Joe, we don't need to exclude you. What do you think about 41? What, I, what I think on? losing Paul Rosenthal really hurts. He, he's an extremely hard worker, and this is his third campaign. He lost by a very slim margin in smart 2006. Smart and conscientious. Very smart. I, I will forgive him for being a Yankees fan, but he's, <laughs> he's the, the best of the best in the legislature. Yeah. And I think that in, in Edina in particular, uh, I think you're right. I don't think Mark Dayton did very well. And I think that that's unfortunately one area of the West Metro where the, the unabashed uh, populism of the Dayton campaign really doesn't play very well. Yeah. So there wasn't much of an upward pull from the top of the ticket. And again, turnout was up over 2006. Turnout when, from 90%? I mean, how it, much could it be up? It, amazingly, it was still up. There were, I believe there were 60,000 extra votes cast between 2006 and 2010 in the gubernatorial race. Wow. The difference is who was turning out. In 2006, it was heavy Democratic turnout and low Republican turnout. This year, it was exactly the opposite. And that says all you need to know about Edina. Right, I agree. So let's talk about 43. Uh, Mixed results in 43. Terry Bonhoff won. Senator Terry Bonhoff, that's good. John Benson won. How did they win in 43? And, uh, and Paul and uh, Kevin had such difficulty in 41. Well, I think Minnetonka is, is a slightly different town from Eden Prairie and Edina. I think that neither Eden Prairie or Edina is, is blood red anymore. I think there's certainly uh, trends toward supporting progressive leaders. But Minnetonka is, is bluing very rapidly, even as the, the average age of the town uh, gets a little bit older. Uh, the bottom line is Terry Bonoff and John Benson both match their districts extremely well, and they're both very, very hard workers. Terry is very good in the business community. Uh, there are a lot of business members. She got endorsed by the Chamber of Commerce. So yeah, uh, it's, it's tough to do better than that in the business community. Yeah. And, and John Benson is simply a very hard worker. He's another one that had, had took a couple of races to get him into the legislature and has held on to that seat very well. Democratic Visions is handmade in Eden Prairie and Minnetonka by DFL Senate District 42. Norbert Gurness, Chair. Democratic Visions can also be seen on our website, dflsd42.org.